638. Trains stop in San Ventura only when we signal them. When I signal them. I'm station master here. This time each year, ordered by trains. By one in particular. Yes, crazy Tom always haunted, all right. Because that's what grief and guilt will do to a man. In fact, don't I see a devil risen before me now? Hear him talking to me? So I'm a conjuration, am I? Answer me, Tom. You are only that. I imagine you. And my voice? I'm only hearing myself. <laughs> You're in bad shape, Tom. Put out your foot. My foot? So I can give you proof that you see what you see. With all my weight. Ow, 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 my foot. Ow. Am I as real to you as the ache in your foot? I can't stand anymore. We have things to recall together, Tom Molly. You know what things? Things like you murdering me. Have you forgotten the old 1155? How could I ever forget it and say my name? Say it. Tommy Reeves, engineer of the 1155. You see, I do remember. The rail was split at Jericho Bend, but you didn't single me to stop. No. They found Gully Reeves in the hollow of Jericho Bend, with his hand on the throttle still. Still engineer of the train, dead as I was. The van air fell into the hollow, but the other car stood hard on the tracks. Every life spared. It was bad, Gully Reeves, but not as bad as it could have been. It was a lucky night for others, but a black night for me. I died when no man should. When no man should, Gully? On the eve of the day I was to marry. Oh, Jenny. Yes, Jenny. The man can't offer his corpse in marriage. You cost me more than life, that black night, Tom. What payment are you here to take from me? Live through this week and see, old man. Then you'll know your punishment. <laughs> devil's apparition can crush your foot. Gully Reeves, whose death was on my hands. Gully Reeves had come back from the earth, and I had his promise now. By the end of the week, he'd square accounts with me. I'd know my punishment. I had the devil's own promise for that. Live through the week and see. Again. Signed. 
Scully Reeves. Scully, 
then the girl. Jenny herself back from the grave. My neglect buried Jenny. I sent her to doom instead of her wedding. In a gown she was proud of, even in death. And Gully, well, he kept his promise as I knew he'd do. Rolled the 1155 for the anniversary week. And always with a message for me at 1154. Just one minute before. I'll ride the van of the 1155, Tom Morley. Look to the rail at Jericho Bend. Look to the rail. Look to the rail. Gully meant to ride the 1155 to his death again. And 
didn't move. My heart swelled up and then it stopped. I stopped it so I could be with Gully Reed. It was a bad time to die. Such a bad time when living could be so good. Mr. McHale. Yes, Tom. You heard what she said. Every word. Every uncanny word. And did you also see her? Yes. Like like a white mist. And long flowing hair. And no flesh that I could see. I do have your hallucinations, Tom. I'm distressed to hear that. You the best mind in San Ventura. I say only what I saw. What was it that Gully promised you? Another wreck of the 1155. Gully would once more ride the van into the hollow of Jericho Bend. In the morning, Mr. McHale put his hallucinations to rest. McHale was such a man. Things had to make sense to him. I ordered an arrest, Tom. The arrest of your stepson, Will. You arrested Will? I'm sure he's behind this and others in with him. Looting graves and dressing up to masquerade as ghosts. Why would Will go against me? To drive you into the madhouse. To drive you to your death. I can't believe it. I know it's a great shock to you, but the boy hates you, Tom. Why does he? Well, unbalanced as you've been these ten years, an unsteady, brooding man... Will's mother died to shut her eyes to you, Tom. She couldn't stand any more of her life with you. The boy thinks this. You're saying that Will blames me for Margaret? For his mother's passing? Yes, and there's your house and land. If you've gone, it'll pass to him. There's a profit in hate for Will. I've reasoned it out. Now, let's see what the ghosts will do. <laughs> a message that night, that last anniversary night, ten years to the day of the old wreck. It said, look to the rail at Jericho Bend. This time I would. There would be no negligence this time. I saw what I hadn't seen ten years before. The rails. The rails were split. Once again, the rails were split. Stop the train. I had to stop the train. This time I knew to stop the train. I signal at it. I waved it. Waved it high in the air so Billy could see it. High, high. Stop! Stop in the name of mercy! I'd won this time. I'd stop the train. I'd won. I awoke from a long sleep in the outdoors with someone standing over me. Mr. McHale. Yes, it's me. Did I faint? Died, I thought, these last ten minutes, Tom. Hardly a pulse to you, hardly a breath. Like your heart had stopped. Stopped? The 1155, Mr. McHale. The 1155. 1155 came and went. Came and went? You signaled it to stop, and it stopped. It's gone now. The train can't wait on an hallucinating old man. But the rail at Jericho Bend, it was split. I saw that with my own eyes. The train took the bend with nothing more. But I saw it. Come, I'll show you. Here at the bend, come see I'm here, Tom, waiting to be shown. Oh, the rail is fine now. What I saw, I didn't see. Except in your mind. Yes, in my mind. And what I see now, only I see. No? Now what? Even now, I see things the devil directs me to see. I see things invisible to you. What do you think you see now? And the ground there in the hollow, if you have eyes for the dark, Mr. McHale, I see a body, a lonely body in the night. <laughs> but you don't see the dead, Mr. McHale. It's only for me to see. No. We see the same things again, Tom. A dead man. You see a dead man, too? Dead man, yes. It's Gully Reeves, dead where he died before. No, Tom, not Gully. We've a strange corpse in this one. A man who died tonight. Tonight? Blood soaked in his clothes and in the dirt. See? And still bleeding. The old dead don't bleed, Tom. And the old dead don't wear police handcuffs. Police handcuffs, you say? See, on his wrists and a bullet hole in his head. See? This one was shot to death. <laughs> I'll telephone the coroner to come for the murdered man. Oh, operator. Mr. McHale, wait. Wait with the telephone. It's Gully on the wireless again. Oh, Gully, is it? Let's not go through that again. I'll take the message, Tom. What is the message, Mr. McHale? An awakening. I'm 
beginning to understand things. And I owe your stepson, Will, an apology. An apology to Will? Yes, the looting of the graves and all that dressing up to make you see ghosts. It wasn't Will's doing. His scheme against you, as I'd reasoned, Will had nothing to do with it. I was wrong there, dead wrong. The message told you that? No, but I know that now. I put it all together. It was a message from a detective who was on the 1155 tonight. He lost a prisoner he was escorting to the state penitentiary, Chip Stavago, a convicted man. The message says we're to look for a short man, bald, wearing a dark suit and handcuffs. Handcuffs? That's the murdered man out there. Now listen carefully, Tom. This pair, Floyd Maxson and his girl Sally, they had worked up a scheme to board the 1155 and seize a prisoner being taken to the state pen. One Chip Stavago. They were out to seize DeVago from under the nose of the detective accompanying him. Seize DeVago and murder him. Which they did. Now, is it clear so far? Clear. All right. San Ventura was the place they picked to stop the 1155, climb aboard, and snatch DeVago. You were to stop the train for them, Tom. That's how your hallucinations came about. Now, the killers, Maxim and his girl Sally were the source of your hallucinations. Now, they obviously knew about you. How you felt about that wreck of ten years ago. How it preyed on your mind. Your sense of personal guilt about it. Now, they worked on you all this anniversary week when you were most susceptible. They played on your imagination. Made you hear voices. See ghosts. All to get you to stop that train tonight. Mr. McHale. Yes, Tom? That story you were telling me about people scheming against my sanity. I'm asking you to tell it to me again. Sure, but not tonight, Tom. Your mind's been burdened enough for one night. Tomorrow, when the anniversary week is over and Gully Reeves isn't in your thoughts. Tomorrow, Tom, we'll go over the whole thing again tomorrow. Hour starring George Matthews and written especially for Suspense by John Robert. Suspense is produced and directed by Fred Hendrickson. Music supervision by Ethel Huber. Heard in tonight's story were Les Damon, Donald Buca, Rosemary Rice, and Dick Keith. Listen again next week when we bring you With Murder in Mind, written by Irwin Lewis. Another tale well calculated to keep you in suspense. This is the CBS Radio Network.